Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This is not a vlog, more more towards the information side of the videos. Uh, but this is important because this is one of the more like crucial topics in the entire journey. I have my notes ready because I don't want to miss out on at least the basic details. But I'll be happy to answer any questions in the comments. Or actually, three four people reached out to me on LinkedIn and asked like some of these questions. And I'm sure like. there are some videos in this space but it's still less as compared to the number of people searching for like information on this and the number of people be essentially applying to to us and coming into us universities for uh, grad graduate degrees so this is mostly going to be like uh, ms programs it's not for phd and it's not for undergrad so it will be different the fee structure is different but you might have like a rough sense if anybody is watching for undergrad or phd you might have like a rough estimate of certain things but uh, it will be best to uh, check college websites and anyway it will be best to check college uh, websites this is mostly like anecdotal rather than instructional video it's just my journey and how much it's costing me and how i am affording it so let's get started uh, the first part is how much does the tuition cost that because that's the most important part and tuition roughly costs around 16000 usd per semester i am studying ms in cs so i have to take 10 subjects if you have any if you are switching from some other course for example electronics or uh, mechanical you might have to take I, i don't think mechanical will be eligible but let's say you're coming from electronics background or something then uh, you'll have to take some deficiency courses so again i'm not including that but considering you do 10 subjects which is enough for graduating and you're doing like non thesis uh, there are two options first of all thesis non thesis so if you do non thesis you have to do 10 subjects if you do thesis you have to do eight subjects and a thesis this is this is strictly for acu but it's roughly s- similar for other uh, schools as well uh 10 subjects you do 3 3 3 and then in the last semester you do one subject uh, the first semester cost 16000 usd like i said the up next semesters will also cost roughly the same maybe 500 uh usd up down something like that but it still be 16000 for so for like sake of simplicity i'll keep 16000 so 16000 into 3 which is 48000 and then uh, an additional i would say the last semester you are only taking one subject so it's not going to be one third of the cost but it's roughly going to be like that it will probably be like i would say 40% of the cost so let's do 7000 to round it up nicely so 48000 and 7000 55000 so 55000 is the tuition for the entire uh, ms program there are no overhead charges this would include like insurance and any other miscellaneous cost uh, so there there are no hidden costs apart from that again this 55000 is for asu but i've seen like mostly for even other schools the tuition goes from i would say in the range of 15000 if you do not have a scholarship it will go from 15000 to it can go up to 20k i think uh, last i checked georgia tech was 19000 i could be i could be slightly wrong or like the numbers could be slightly off but it should give you a rough idea it it's not going to be like 30000 for a semester uh, for two year programs i the, i've not seen something like that maybe some schools will have like some schools like columbia uh, generally the ivy schools and then humish and arbor these schools are very expensive and there will be some schools which are on the cheaper side like cal state co- uh, colleges something like that so it will obviously be a range but generally roughly it will be around this so you can again go to the website of the particular university that you are applying to and then check for the exact cost so 55000 usd is equivalent to roughly 45 lakhs inr let's just park that number somewhere uh, and then we'll come back to that now the next major expense is obviously the housing and living so uh, housing is generally again this is for asu tempe phoenix uh, this area this area around cost 800 to 900 could go up to 1000 for a room if you are not sharing the room with someone else uh, if you are sharing the room with someone else it will be just the half of that so roughly 400 max 500 base price of 2 b 2 b is go up to 2000 could go up to 2200 for in 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 some nicer apartments uh and the minimum is roughly 1600 i've not seen many apartments below below that number below 1600 so your rent is roughly 800 900 i pay 800 exactly uh for a room in a 2 b 2 b so that is that is just the rent apart from that there will be utilities now in my case utilities are included in the rent so i don't have to pay anything else i have to pay wifi which is 15 but i think you can add like 50 60 dollars for water electricity and what else sewer 
that's it gas yeah whatever basically include utilities and if if you do include utilities you can keep the number to 900 i think 900 should be your max cap again sticking to tempe for now uh other places have different i've heard that uh, like my friend studied in georgia tech so i remember him saying that he used to pay 900 split by 2 because they were sharing the room but 900 uh for a room uh, i think that is cheaper in texas texas was is probably going to be 500 for a room pittsburgh is roughly 600 500 600 for a room uh san diego is roughly it it it's expensive obviously so it can go up to 1500 for a room new york would be 1500 to 2000 so like the, this is these are all anecdotal i don't want to get too like uh, fixated on the numbers but you can get a directional sense of how much uh, city costs uh, mostly it's going to be 800 to 1000 if you're not going to like west coast or like cali or new york i think it's going to be somewhere around 800 for a room maybe a little less if you're going to places like pittsburgh or i don't know texas so 800 850 for uh, the rent and then you have additional groceries cost so that will be another i would say 100 150 I, i'll probably make a detailed video of what i uh, how much i spend on living expense my storage got full so i had to clear up some space in my iphone anyway as i was saying so 850 for rent 150 for groceries say another 100 for just like breathing space because if you're eating out let's say a meal costs generally ten dollars could go up to twenty dollars if it's in a fancier place. But let's say the overall cost is twelve hundred. So twelve hundred would roughly mean one lakh INR. So that is one lakh INR per month for the two years, which is twenty four lakhs. So you have forty five lakhs tuition and twenty four lakhs living. This is roughly going to be similar for most places. That's why generally, like when you ask, like how much does it cost for a uh, MS? For an MS program, it people generally say like it costs around 70 to 80. So in this case, it's going to be 70, uh, 69, holy number uh, to be exact. Now in this video, I'm going to talk about how I am financing it. I think it will be worthwhile to make another video of how you can reduce the cost because there are a lot of places where you can living cost generally everybody uh, balances it, it, it out using their part-time jobs or their on-campus jobs. They generally left with like 100, 200, in some cases 500 more. Uh, savings from their on-campus minus their expenses so that's good and also like you you have certain ways of wor uh, working around with the tuition as well like if you get some research assistantship if you're doing a thesis or uh, or if you have some scholarship how to get scholarship probably I won't know for every other every school but at least for ASU I think I'll have figured out like uh, what are the scholarships and then probably make a video around it but in this video I'm just talking about how I am financing it so here's the thing I had this thing in mind that I'll have to get an on-campus job to kind of neutralize the living expense. That is number one. And it's easier to do that. It's generally super easy to get an on-campus job. But in ASU, it's a little difficult. I'm not sure if any other school it, it is difficult. But in ASU, there are a lot of people. It's like very heavily populated. So and there aren't that many jobs to kind of the demand supply gap is there. So it's difficult to get a job. I did like I, I would have made a video, I think a couple of weeks back where I did like 500 seven applications to get like nine responses it, it generally isn't that hard so for other schools it will be easier to get an on campus from day i would say at least from month one in asu it generally takes up to a semester i luckily got it on my month two uh but if you have something like that that completely neutralizes the the living expense cost so my plan was obviously to get an on campus to kind of offset the living expense all i was worried about was that 45 lakhs now how i planned it out is I had some savings because I worked for three and a half years in the industry in India. So I had like decent amount of savings, almost like half of the tuition. I don't want to mention the exact cost or whatever, too much information out there. But uh, I did not use that. So I invested it somewhere else. Like I invested in Indian markets and I just forgot about it, forgot about the money because I want to use it for like retirement fund and early retirement and stuff. So I funny thing i used to talk about investments all the time in my channel so yeah full circle anyway uh yeah so i've invested that so i'm not touching their money i got a loan sanction for 40 lakhs from hdfc credila this will probably be a separate video if 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 anybody's interested in getting the nitty gritties into it there is already a lot of information available but uh, i can maybe talk about how why i chose the hdfc credila the benefits pros and cons but i took hdfc credila unsecured loan no collateral at I think roughly I, I can talk about the ROI later, but I think it's roughly off the top of my head. It's 11 point. It's 10.75, 10.75%. 10 
uh, I have not disbursed the loan yet. So I've just got it sanctioned and I'll use it in my next semester. I've come for spring. So the first semester I took the money from my parents. Basically what, what happened is my mom had some money in an FD and an FD sucks, right? So again, go back to my investment advice, but yeah, FD sucks. So I told her that I'll just use and that FD matured like a couple of months back. So I just told her that, Hey, I'll just use that money of yours to fill in my tuition for the first semester and I'll pay you back at a better rate. So. I'll probably give her 8% interest. The banks are giving her 6%. I'm doing that first of all, because the rate of interest, the loan is sanctioned at is 10.75. Is and so I'm getting at a cheaper rate, essentially I'm borrowing at a cheaper rate from my mom. And also because my investments are working for me at a higher rate, it should yield like a 12, 13, probably 15% CAGR in five, 10 year time frame. So this, this was the cheapest source of money that way. The, I just have to pay, let's say six to eight percent. I I don't I don't think I'll pay six percent. I should pay eight percent because I've borrowed from my mom. So that's a good thing as as a nice gesture. I'll just pay eight percent, maybe maybe ten percent if things go well. Uh, I've yet to decide that, but uh, so I've essentially taken that money from my mom. I think I've taken roughly thirteen lakhs, twelve lakhs actually. I forgot. Yeah, but thirteen lakhs just to just enough for my first tuition fee. That's like sixteen thousand USD. So I have paid that off. Uh, I had some using my savings I used to book like whatever flight tickets, buying a laptop and uh, the first month expense that I've used from my savings only. And then since I've got, I, now I have an on-campus job, I won't need any more funds for, for living expense. Hopefully if I do continue doing this. So that's now sorted. No, now I only have to care about that 45 lakhs. 13 lakhs is already paid out of that. So remaining is 32 lakhs, which I will essentially use the loan for. And why am I using a loan if I already have savings again? The difference is not that much, but um, like because I'm borrowing at a rate of 10.75% and my investments are at 13, 14%. But the thing is there are certain more benefits in taking a loan. You can get some tax benefits if, if my dad is paying off the loan so that way it is cheaper to borrow at a rate of if, if the rate is 10.75 as long as you are using your money to you know grow at a faster rate as long as you're beating that rate it's it's decent to get, get a loan but the rate is a little on the higher end uh, but that's just how it is that's why i'm not using my money and anyway even if i would have used my money i'd still have to borrow some because it, it wasn't enough to uh, cover the entire tuition so anyway, if I have to borrow, let's say 20 lakhs, I might as well just, I, I just got sanctioned for 40 lakhs. I'll probably need 32 only. So, uh, that, that's how, that's how I have planned it. The second you get the loan disbursed, I think you'll have to pay a 5,000 rupees, uh, pre EMI charge, which is nothing. And I think after you graduate again, I'll probably get into the nitty gritties of the HDFC credit loan in another video. But uh, you essentially, as far as I know, you have to pay it off. You have to start paying it off as soon as you graduate. I think you can get a six month extension could be wrong, but uh, th that's, that's how the structure of the loan is. So that's, that's what, and this is an important question in the visa interview as well. I, I was also asked this that people are generally asked that how you're financing your education. And in my case, I'm like self plus parents fund plus the loan. Uh, and that's completely fine. That's completely okay. Just to reiterate, I am still paying full tuition out of my pocket. I'm just like that only the living cost is offset by the on campus. There are ways to offset tuition as well in a lot of schools. Uh, if you get RA, TA, you essentially after a year, if you get RA, your entire semester fees uh, gets waived off. If you get TA in some schools, I think 50% of it gets waived off. RA is contingent on whether you want to pursue PhD or thesis. So they don't generally give RA to people who are not, who are just looking for MS, CS, who are just looking to do like coursework and leave. Um, like the, that, that is of no interest to the professors. So, uh, getting an RA is hard. I think the best is to try to offset the living cost. You can't really do much with the tuition. You can, I would, again, I would break down. Uh, what are the possibilities and what are the probabilities of doing those in another video, but that's it for this one and I'll see you in the next one.